This is Campus News, reporting the top stories from colleges and universities. Next on Campus News, a scandal and tragedy shake up Dickinson State University. See how students are checking out ebooks at MSU Moorhead. One NDSU soccer player shares her goal to play in the Olympics. And learn how one MSU Moorhead college student keeps his heart pumping. Good morning and welcome to Campus News. I'm Laura Lee Lofsgaard. And I'm Robert Swanson. After an academic scandal hit the campus of Dickinson State University, DSU President D.C. Costin is encouraging students and faculty to stick together and grow stronger in this time of struggle. Reporter Callan Klein is here with the latest on the hardships hitting DSU's campus. Thanks, Robert and Laura Lee. A campus lockdown, fake degrees, and a suicide. These are the pieces of what has become a tragic puzzle for Dickinson State University. It began back in 2003 when DSU began looking overseas to boost its enrollment. China quickly became one of the school's most reliable sources for students. But a recent audit report on the college resulted in these troubling findings. The audit revealed a total of 743 students who participated in the programs at DSU are now in question. Only 10 of 410 students who have already received DSU degrees completed all their coursework and requirements. Out of the 127 agreements DSU has with international schools to make sure the students meet requirements before they come to DSU, only four were valid. Now the same day the audit results were announced, DSU's campus was put on lockdown after police investigations revealed DSU Dean Doug LaPlante left his home on foot carrying a large caliber rifle. The search for LaPlante ended tragically after officials found his body a few blocks north of the university. Police say LaPlante died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. A spokesperson for Dickinson State University says LaPlante did not know the result of the audit before he took his own life. LaPlante led the business school where many of the students in question studied, but was not implicated in the audit. Back to you, Robert and Laura Lee. Thanks, Callan. Classes have since resumed at DSU, and President Costin says it's heartening to see learning underway on campus as it should be. The scandal at DSU has brought attention to the way international students are recruited to American campuses. Even before the results of the audit, five Chinese students were sent home because their English skills did not meet the basic requirements. Director of International Student Services at MSU Moorhead, Janet Hohenstein, says it can take six to eight months for foreign exchange students to make it to the U.S. International exchange student Shinanya Tante Erevun came here from Thailand to work on her four-year degree. She says she can't imagine going through the process and then being told to leave. I expect to go to university here. I you know, have plan in life, but then all of a sudden they tell you you not meet the requirement, and that can be heartbroken, you know. Many colleges and universities deal with agents. International student programmer Ludmi Harith explains how some agents take advantage of students and the university. Most students is more money for the agent. So they will pretty much do anything to submit that application packet to the institution. And institution is trusting these agents, thinking that, oh, we have given you the application criteria. Some agents earn up to 15% of tuition a school brings in from international students during their first year in the U.S. A former University of North Dakota researcher is called out at Duke. Dr. Anil Pody has resigned after misleading data on cancer research came to light at Duke University. Pody was featured on 60 Minutes' report called Deception at Duke last Sunday. He received his training at UND's Fargo campus before being an assistant professor at UND for three years. Pody is currently a cancer doctor in South Carolina. He told CBS he was unaware of the false information in his research. Nine patients have filed suits against him and Duke has suspended his findings. In President Obama's recent State of the Union address, one of his main focuses was on the unemployment rate in the United States. One way of minimizing this problem is developing partnerships between businesses and community colleges. Chelsea Smith takes us to Minnesota State Community and Technical College where they're doing just that. The sun has yet to rise here at MSCTC in Moorhead, and people file into room F116 to get an early start on their day. They are the students and staff of the Diesel Equipment Technology Department. 
with a quick pep talk from instructor Dave Eliason. You need help getting your piston rings off or I can help you? Let me know. Students put on their work goggles yeah. and get started yeah. on today's them. assignment. Take off an oil pan and start removing the piston so we're going to flip the engine over now. With the high unemployment rate in high-tech manufacturing jobs, many students are motivated by the security of a stable career. But for first-year student Clinton Corey, he has more than just himself to put the hard work in for. I've got two kids at home. They're all still in diapers and uh, makes it hard sometimes uh, going to school, going to work, and uh, family time. Many students are sponsor students, which means they have a partnership with a company. And following graduation, they will not only have the opportunity to work for that company, they will also receive other benefits. Tuition assistance, uh, positions during internship, which is a paid internship. So it works, and then they have a job at the end. So it works out very well for our students. President Obama says his goal is to train two million people with the skills that lead them directly to a job. And with programs like the Diesel Technology Program, it gives students like Corey, not only the security of a fulfilling career, but to be able to provide for the family he loves. Chelsea Smith, Campus News. Case, Titan, and John Deere are just a couple of the companies sponsor students have the opportunity to work for following graduation. NDSU is making an effort to improve accessibility for students and faculty with disabilities on campus. The results of a survey taken by 165 faculty members were shared in an open forum. The Forward Task Force on Women Faculty with Disabilities found the majority of the anonymous respondents said NDSU was somewhat accessible to those with a physical disability. Task Force and faculty member Jane Shu says one of the committee's priorities is improving access and accessibility. Even if you have good intentions, a lot of the times this is not something that's in the forefront of your head. This isn't something that you walk through campus and say, hmm, if I took a drink from that water fountain and I was sit seated at a, at a, in a wheelchair, would I be able to access it? The task force plans to continue taking action on campus in the form of data collection, campus discussion, and policy review. Chances are at one point in time you have searched Google Earth to check out your house with satellite images or use MapQuest for driving directions. MSU Moorhead is inviting you to learn about the digital mapping technology making sites like these possible. Geographic Information System workshops will be free and open to the public on February 21st, 23rd, and 29th in King Hall. Participants only need to attend one session to learn what GIS is, how to use it, and discover its applications. A sweeping wave of digital technologies has made it easy to download ebooks on the mobile tablets and bring them with us wherever we go. But according to the Chronicle of Higher Education, an Indiana company is hoping to popularize its use, especially among universities. Zach Denzer has more on this developing medium. Paper or tablet? It's a decision that MSUM freshman and avid ebook user Nick Walters says students shouldn't be forced to make. But with ebook prices constantly undermining that of traditional textbooks, this learning tool is becoming more and more of an appealing option for universities. The books are cheaper because you're not paying for the paper, you're only paying for the content. A $30 book in a bookstore is only maybe $15. The ebook company course load is one of many corporations attempting to help colleges make the transition to electronic learning launching a three-semester trial run of their program at Indiana University. Walter says college students have reasons to be hesitant about making the shift. College students are going to stay with the regular books because then when you're done with that semester, I can go sell back that paperback book. I can get some money back with an e-book. You're stuck with that book. MSUM course materials manager Mary Beckerleg says she believes that most college students haven't yet embraced the textbook change. A lot of students we, I have found do not like ebooks. Your science books might be a little harder to get all that information where you can open up different pages. Electronic books may not have much significance for most university students, but for Nick Walters and other individuals who utilize this technology, ebooks will remain an active part of routine academic life. With photographer Shoko Akiyama, Zach Denzer, Campus News. 
Though some colleges' courses are starting to transition over to e-books, only 25% of the new textbooks are available in digital form. Walking 500 miles across northern Spain, one MSU Moorhead professor turned his research into a journey of discovery. Spanish professor Benjamin Smith conducted research along the historical pilgrimage trail, the Way of St. James. His goal was to find manuscripts containing the first traces of the written Spanish language. I'm finding those little pieces of, you know, it's a lot of investigative work to be able to put together a better, more comprehensive picture of the history of the Spanish language. Smith will be sharing about his experience and research on Tuesday, February 21st at 7.30 p.m. in the MSUM Library Auditorium. North Dakota's oil boom is causing a boom in enrollment at the University of North Dakota. Forty students have enrolled in the school's new Department of Petroleum Engineering. UND created the department specifically in response to the oil overflow in North Dakota. Program Director Steve Benson says he expects the number to rise to 50 or more students by fall. Benson says students from all over the U.S. have expressed interest in the program. But he says a lot of the students are also North Dakotans who want to stay in state after they graduate. UND is the only petroleum engineering program in the state. Most students rely on financial aid and private student loans to pay for college. With changes coming, financial aid experts say students should be more aware about where their money will be coming from. Carly Lemkul tells us more. According to a recent report, outstanding student loans will reach $1 trillion by the end of the year. President Obama has proposed a plan that will help college graduates repay federal student loans. Administrators in financial aid say students should use all sources of funding before going to a private loan. A year ago, our graduating class borrowed about $30,000 for the students that borrowed. The, the average was a little over $30,000. With Stafford loan rates rising, students may be able to find cheaper rates on private loans to help pay for school. Low private loan rates often vary, which will make decisions more difficult. Entrance and exit loan counseling can help with how to plan ahead. It made me realize like, that the interest rate is realistic and that it's going to take you many, many, many years to pay it off. Obama's plan will allocate billions of dollars in financial aid to colleges and universities that limit tuition increases. This is Carly Lemkul, Campus News. Each year, students take out more than $100 billion in federal loans and $10 billion in private loans. Connecting biology and evolution to North Dakota is North Dakota State University's goal in celebrating Darwin Day. The university set up a room full of plants and animals native to the Midwest. Organizers say their goal was getting students aware of the theory of evolution. We've pulled out interesting artifacts of evolution that we see in a lot of the species we have here in North Dakota. So we're just displaying them, but here we wanted to show the general population at NDSU, you know, evolution and how you can see it every day. Darwin Day is celebrated by the Department of Biological Sciences every year. Concordia students gave a new meaning to the term Sunday Fun Day. They spent the day blowing things up and setting things on fire, and this all took place in a church. The John Templeton Foundation recently gave a Scientists in Congregations grant to Trinity Lutheran Church in Moorhead. The grant provides Concordia students a chance to teach children science in church. Although the contrast between science and religion is a hard one to tackle, Reverend Colin Grandgard says the grant has presented a great opportunity to wrestle with it. NDSU students are recreating childhood memories. Reporter Kira Murphy tells us more on the campus's cuddly attraction. Um, but then, yeah, grab one bag of stuffing, a t-shirt, and then there's some cookies and snacks at the end. Bags full of cotton stuffing and cookies. But it wasn't just the cookies the students were anxiously waiting for. It was the teddy bears. Yeah, I've never built a bear, stuffed a bear, and I thought it was fun even if it was just last minute. My friend kind of told me tonight, she's like, hey guys, let's go make a Build-A-Bear. And I was like, okay. So we just found out today. NDSU student, Randy Schermeister, already found a home for his bear. I wanted to make this for my sister because Valentine's Day is coming up here. Teddy bears were getting named too. He kind of looks like an Elliot or something. So yeah, probably an Elliot. In one word, Schermeister described the event. Um. Mayhem. Too many people were like, good thing we got here so early or else we probably wouldn't have gotten a bear. 
Over a hundred bears like this were made tonight. Unfortunately, some students were left bearless. There were only about 130 bears available to give to students, so some were turned away. Campus attractions at NDSU organized the Build-A-Bear event. They host events for students all the time, but this was something different. The closest thing we've ever done is like build a bison, and that was for homecoming a few years ago, but nothing like Build-A-Bear. Altogether, these college students got to be five again. We're out to relive our childhood of like everybody has a stuffed animal. I had a blanket, I didn't have an animal, and it still brings memories back for me. Kiara Murphy, Campus News. The Build-A-Bear was born on August 21st, 1998 in St. Louis, Missouri. The Dragon Entertainment Group made a special ending to the Dragon Frost Week by creating a Freeze Your Fanny fun run. Despite the chilly temperatures, students dressed in everything from swimsuits to shorts and suspenders. Kyle Schulte was the first to cross the finish line of this non-competitive race. The winter ones are definitely the more fun ones just because they're usually more laid back and everyone's kind of uptight because it's cold and they're just kind of fun when you're done. More rewarding. The winter run gives students a chance to get away from their studies and stretch their legs during the winter months. Freezer Fanny is an annual Dragon Frost event. Winters in the Fargo-Moorhead area can be long and cold, but every January, Concordia College celebrates the end of winter by hosting a beauty pageant. Reporter Noor Alamran shows us how participants try to win the title of Mr. Concordia. Mr. Concordia is an event held every year at Concordia College. Hosted by the Limpta Delta Sigma Sorority. Some might think that a beauty pageant is a superficial event, but one participant in Mr. Concordia explains that there is a reason behind it. Every ticket is a donation to the YWCA for Fargo, um, for women who have been through abuse, things like that. And so it's ultimately a philanthropy project. So in that sense, even though it's like we are kind of objectifying ourselves, we're doing it for a really good cause, which I think is worth it in the end. Talent ranged from singing to cooking and to everything in between. A member of the sorority also says that this is not only for charity. It's more about just kind of having fun and letting guys get to be the center of attention instead of girls. Even though they all showed their copper spirit and talent in many different ways, there was only one winner, Paul Flussland. Showing off my copper pride is something I, I do on a daily basis, but to, to, to a Show off my pride in front of my peers is a great honor to do. Every year, the sorority holds a Mr. Concordia event. And every year, one student who shows his talent and copper spirit more than anyone else will be the new Mr. Concordia. With photographer Arista de Sereno, Nural Amran, Campus News. The event brought in $770 for the YWCA. One University of Wisconsin student creates quite a stir with a Lady Gaga song, being used to promote a pro-gay, anti-bullying video. Student and filmmaker Colton Brescher directed, produced, and edited a video supporting gay teens. The video features Lady Gaga song Hair, telling teens that life will get better. Brescher used University of Wisconsin-Madison students along with high school students to create the video. The clip was praised by Lady Gaga and already has over half a million hits. And now we turn it over to C.J. Pierre for a look at this week's sports. Or here you have a story for us about a Bison soccer player who had a great opportunity. Yeah, she had a chance to do something that not many players have had. A dream to play for the Guatemalan Olympic team has delivered more than expected for one North Dakota State University soccer player. Shannon Brooks is one of over 100 athletes who tried out for the national squad in Guatemala, and she made the team. Colin Boyles tells us more about her incredible journey. Oh, Lasso. Hey, how are you feeling? Coming to North Dakota from California, Shannon Brooks used her talents to earn a place on the NDSU soccer team. She never imagined her Guatemalan roots would allow her to also play for a shot at the Olympics. My coach called me, told me, you know, you're Guatemalan, right? I'm like, yeah, coach, what's up? Like, give me the details, what's happening? You know, this is something cool. I don't, you know, I never get a question that. The Guatemalan coach was about to pose the question. 
Would she be willing to try out for Guatemala's national team trying to make the 2012 London Olympic Games? Yeah. Each day was different, hard, intense. You know, he was trying to find the best out of us. The ball and who's getting out? Shannon confirmed her coach's decision to choose her for the team against some of the biggest names in women's soccer, including her childhood idol. I had a Mark Shannon box because she was like the strong header. So I marked against her and we had a play and then I beat her to the ball. So I was like, yeah, and really cool. So that was like my big play that I remember of playing against the U.S. Work it, Yellow, work it. Although her team was unable to qualify for the 2012 London Games, Shannon's mom was just a call away to console her. I know we had a couple of tears when I made the team and, you know, a couple of tears right after, you know, games losing against Mexico or the U.S. in Vancouver, you know, having that phone call, just, you know, make sure that your mom really loves you. That was crazy. I thought they were a journey that began as Shannon's grandmother took nine children across the border has led to a reconnection with her Guatemalan roots. With photographer Kenny Buck, Colin Boyles, yeah, yeah, see. Campus News Sports. <laughs> Although Shannon's team didn't qualify for the London Games, she'll be trying out for the Guatemalan national team again in hopes to play for the 2014 World Cup. Fresh off winning a college national championship, one North Dakota State University football player is ready to take his talents to the next level. Bison offensive tackle Paul Kornick was invited to participate in this year's NFL Combine. The 6'6", 309-pounder received All-American honors this past season, thanks in part to his 102 knockdown blocks. The NFL Scouting Combine will be held February 22nd through the 28th in Indianapolis. The 2012 NFL Draft begins on April 26th. Concordia's women's basketball team is heading to a place that's become all too familiar with, the postseason. With a win over St. Olaf, the Coppers secured their 10th straight trip to the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference playoffs. The Copper women are currently seated third in the standings behind St. Thomas and Gustavus. The playoffs begin this Tuesday. The Coppers wrap up the regular season this afternoon at home against St. Benedict. Tip-off is at one. Athletes at the University of North Dakota aren't only being recognized on the playing field, but they're being recognized in the classroom as well. UND placed 28 student athletes on the 2011 Great West Conference Fall Academic All-Conference Team. To be on the team, athletes have to have a cumulative 3.2 GPA and at least participated in 50% of their team's contests. UND's 28 honorees come from football, volleyball, soccer, and men and women's cross country. In all, 155 athletes were named to the Great West Conference team. With a new coach and talented shooters, Demish Women's men's basketball team says they're having one of the most successful seasons they've had in years. The Dragons started out strong, then hit a few bumps in the road. But they say they're now on top of their game. Reporter Macy Eglin has a story. This year's men's basketball team at MSUM currently has a winning record unlike any they've had in past years, and fans are saying it's because of their new leadership. Chad Walthall has been head coach for the men's basketball team for two years now and says that so far it's been terrific. Coach Walthall is known for turning struggling teams into some of the top teams in the nation, which he has now done for MSUM. When I was interested in this job, I knew it was really a good city to recruit to, and I knew it was a great university. And so you start there and then you start to get to know the people and say, okay, you know, like anything else, it takes a village to be successful. So when you get and combine all those things, you say, okay, this, this has a chance to maybe turn this thing around. And so that kind of got me interested in it and so far it's worked out. The Dragons had a big winning streak in the beginning of their season and then struggled for a while. But they say they responded to it in a positive way and are once again on the top of their game. We had a good stretch in the beginning where we were, what, 12-0? and 0, And uh, we had a couple losses, but now we're back to our winning ways and I don't think we'll lose anymore. Some of the players have set personal goals to help them play as well as they can and help the team succeed. Play like every game's your last and uh, just give all your effort for the team and hopefully get these W's and go far in the tournament. As the season nears its end, the Dragons are hoping to continue to play as well as they have and win both the NSIC Conference Tournament and the NSIC Final Four Tournament. If they can do that, they'll make it into the national tournament, something the team hasn't done in years. The Dragons believe that with the effective leadership and the determination the players possess, they'll be the team to end this losing tradition. With photographers Garrett Madison and Dan Zebel, I'm Macy Eglin, Campus News Sports. The Dragons are on the road tonight as they take on Upper Iowa. Tip-off is at 8 o'clock. 
And the Dragons are in good shape. If the season ended today, they'd have a first round bye and be able to host a home game in the NSIC Conference Tournament. Well, we'll see how things turn out for them. Thank you, CJ. February is Heart Health Month, and reporter Krista Baim takes a look at one college student and what he is doing to keep his heart healthy. Most college students deal with hectic schedules throughout the academic year, and trying to stay healthy during this time can become difficult. For a busy college student like Glenn Marshall, taking the time to exercise is not always so easy, but the overall outcome is worth it. I guess it feels good for one thing to uh, feel like I'm active and doing something. Um, you know, after work you get kind of that runner's high or whatever, and then the feeling of accomplishment too if you achieve a new goal. Working out in places like the Wellness Center may not be an option for some busy students, but there are other ways to keep a healthy heart. We don't even talk about it in terms of exercise anymore. We just talk about it in terms of physical activity. Vacuuming is physical activity. You know, shoveling is physical activity. But that's still a half an hour to an hour a day would be optimum. And you can break it up. And that's the other thing, into like 10 or 15 minute increments. It doesn't have to be one solid hour of high impact step aerobics. Physical activity is an important aspect when keeping a healthy heart. But it's not the only thing that you can do. Eating healthy is important as well. My New Year's resolution is eat more vegetables, and that's been going pretty well. Actually, the working out motivates me to eat healthy too, because I read all these, you know, bodybuilding stuff, and they're like, yeah, you, you got to eat the protein and stuff, feed your feed your hungry muscles. I'm like, okay, so I try to. I don't want to work out and then not get the full benefit I could because I'm not eating healthy. For students like Marshall, it is important to pay attention to eating habits and working out. By taking these steps now, it could help save a life in the future. With photographer Caitlin Wigmore, Krista Baim. Campus News. For more information on living a healthy lifestyle, you can visit www.heart.org. And that is it for this edition of Campus News. We leave you with video of the Jazz Concert Festival from North Dakota State University. Thanks for watching. We hope you join us next week. Campus News is produced by the Television News Workshop in the Department of Mass Communications at Minnesota State University Moorhead in cooperation with Prairie Public Television.